Good morning or good afternoon, wherever you're watching us from. This is Matt Canick, joined today by Hannah Lieberman for day three of the Scrabble Players Championship from Las Vegas, Nevada. Our first game today is going to feature Jackson Smiley and Will Anderson, two of the best players on the continent of North America. Uh, Jackson threatening to do what he did at World Cup two weeks ago. He is 12-2, and two, two games clear of the field already, and a win over one of the strongest players left in the field, Will Anderson, would do volumes to accelerate his run towards maybe another possible Gibsonization. Uh, I'm looking forward to a great game. Will plays both Collins and NWL, played Collins at Word Cup two weeks ago, playing NWL here, but he is a word machine, a Scrabble machine, and puts out more content than anybody. If you haven't found Will on uh, YouTube yet, you got to search him up. He puts out some great stuff. Hannah, I know you know these players well. What are you looking forward to in this game? Well, I have to tell you, most of my uh, commentary experience is alongside Will. So it's interesting to see him on the other side of this. Um, obviously, they're both incredible players. So I'm sure we're going to see a really interesting game. Jackson's having, you know, one hell of a tournament. We'll see if he can run away with it again. We're getting to the point now where players are pulling away. Um, we're definitely getting a clearer group of who's going to be in contention uh, to at least be in the running. So interesting to see what happens here. It looks like he's got Adbot plus ET. Yeah, I expect to see him play Boated here, B-O-A-T-E-D, for 24 points, 24 holds it consonant. Um, I don't see any compelling short plays. Could consider just playing B-O-T, Bot, for 10. But A-D-E-T, while it is a great leave, is not good enough to bypass 14 points with a play like Boated. And sure enough, that is what Jackson's going to do. As he has uh, patented, yeah, this vertical opening strategy, uh, done it several times now this tournament and uh, continuing to give us entertainment on the stream. I know this is a big controversy among some people. Some people loathe the vertical opening. Some people always do it for trolls. Some people go back and forwards, you know. Uh, Jackson playing vertically here. I do the same. Way to go, Jackson. I like it. I have to say, I'm just excited that Will corrected his tiles and has them upright <laughs> because we dealt with some of that yesterday where we were all cranking our heads. Um, so I feel like that's easier to deal with, at least. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Will, oh, wow. So Will's gone back and forth between Lexica and uh, has a Collins only seven in this rack, Fayence, but playing NWL here will not be able to play that. I'm sure Will recognizes this and has to be a little bit frustrated. Oh, I'm playing in the wrong dictionary for this rack. But alas, it is what it is. And I think he's got two very solid options. One is F-E-Y alongside Boated, making F-A-E-T and Y-E for 23 points, holding a nice balanced A-C-E-N. The other is Beefy from the B, uh, scores three more points, and uh, holds just A-C-N, so slightly worse leave, but slightly more points for the now. And Will's got to make a decision, I think, between these two. It looks as though he's favoring F-E-Y at this time, given the way he's set up his rack. But uh, we'll see what he decides to do. I think they're very similar plays just uh, do I want more now or do I want more down the road? I did a little bit of recon for us at uh, in the chat yesterday. I was trying to figure out why Noah Walton was turning his tiles 90 degrees sideways as opposed to playing, you know, with all of them upright like almost every other person does. Was he just doing it to troll the stream or does he do this in every game now? And the answer is that certain sets of tiles maybe allegedly have a little dot at the top or at the bottom, depending on what letter it is. And there's potential for uh, players who don't realize that they have a blank to put the blank, quote unquote, upside down and expose that little dot. But the tiles we're using on stream don't have that problem. And uh, wow. I guess no one's just doing it with every single set of tiles, turning them all 90 degrees sideways. So uh, anytime we see Noah on stream, we will... <laughs> we will get more of those sideways tiles. And Noah having a some next level preparation. And I would say maybe a little bit paranoia, but <laughs> I, you know, certainly his opponent would not know what tiles are on his rack. I think that is fair to say. You know, I was playing in one tournament several years ago and I just happened to look at my opponent's rack and realize he had eight tiles on it. And I stopped the <laughs> clock and I'm like, are you aware that you have eight tiles? And he was 
totally unaware. But that's when it hit me. Like, I never look at my opponent's rack at all. I'm not looking to see if they're scrambling. I'm not looking to see if their tiles are all pushed together. I don't watch them put their letters down if they're alphabetizing or not. I would never notice if there were a little dot on the top or not. Oh, I would no. never notice if you were playing with 11 tiles on your rack. I once triple tripled and my opponent was like but i didn't set up a triple triple lane and i had just played eight tiles <laughs> <laughs> this was funny. like when i first started i must have been like 14 years old or something and so i not only lost that turn but i was like penalized 50 points and i was like well that basically sucked <laughs> yeah yeah that's a bummer uh your, your triple triple bummer. turns into an overdraw and they throw away your best tile and yeah not not fun Anyway, we'll get back to the Scrabble here. Uh, Jackson's got to make a decision. Uh, five vowels on his rack. No good scoring opportunities. But he can play Aerobe, as it looks like he's got set up A-E-R-O-B-E -E, through the B. Or he can keep things small and tight and play O-E, hoping A-E-E-R-T. Mm -hmm. um, either of those makes sense, but we've seen Jackson time and time again I like to play just a little bit longer out of these racks and not get caught up fishing. And I think that's what we're going to see again here. Arrow playing for 16 points. Uh, some of you at home who are a little newer to Scrabble might be thinking, well, why doesn't he play Rate or Tarot or Rato on the right side of Boated? That's four overlaps, right? You could, If you played Rate, you're going to make Far, ETA, Yet, and DE. Well, that leave of EEO is so absolutely abysmal. You can't make a play like that. You're hamstringing yourself next turn and probably the turn or two beyond that as well. So Jackson doing the wise thing here, playing a little bit longer. And uh, I, I agree with this decision. Absolutely. Aerobe is a good play for him. And we'll pass back over to Will, who is sitting on A-C-E-L-N-N-T. Oh. It's going to be interesting for Will what he chooses to do here. I mean, he definitely wants to get rid of one of those ends, right? Maybe something like as simple as clan under aerobe. Um, I don't, I mean, I, I don't have crackle open and I'm not the strongest player in the world. I'm not seeing any super high scoring opportunities for him at this point. Uh, it's kind of that curse where you have these bingo friendly tiles, but they don't quite bingo where you're like, well, now what do I do with them? Yeah, stuck in the sticks. I'm going to say that over and over on stream over the next two weeks. You got one pointers, but you can't bingo with them and you can't score super well. Will will have a few uh, good scoring opportunities for him. Two overlaps on top of Aerobe. One is Cental, C E N T A L. The other is Canel, C A N N E L. Both of those are going to be four overlaps that play for 27. Uh, so that's a way for him to take this rack and sort of blow it up, play longer, as we just saw Jackson do. Uh, if he likes to be a little bit more aggressive and try to play for a bingo, as there are numerous bingo lines on this rack, he could also consider playing N-A-N on the left or right side of uh, Bodit, making Fan, Ada, and Yen. But it looks like he is electing to play Centel here, 27 points, holds on to an N, very similar play to Canel, but the N just a slightly better tile than the T, at least in this lexicon, and Will making what looks to be the correct play this turn. Back over to Jackson, A-E-E-E-L-M-T. So he has gotten out of his vowel trouble very quickly, thanks to the play of Aero. <laughs> and uh, he's going to have to, again, make one of these decisions. Do I keep these four tile leaves with one pointers? Uh, A-E-L-T would be a great leave to hold. And E-M-E -E plays for 21 points beneath Aero, making N-A-M and T-E-E. -E. Or do I score a little bit now, a little bit more now? Um, he can play in the same spot, T-E-E-M making N-A-E, T-E-E, -E, and ARM, that would be 26 points, significantly more, but holds A-E-L, not nearly as nice as A-E-L-T. He could play even a little bit longer and play Melee on top of Aerobe, making M-E, stringing out to the double word for 27. So does Jackson want 21 points and a leave that bingos fairly often, or does he want 26 or 27 now? We will see what he decides to do. Um, but I expect likely Jackson to opt for the shorter play here of Eam just because AELT is so strong and there are numerous bingo lines on this board. Uh, one on top of Aerobe and both on the left and right side of the Boated and Face stack that we have. I would agree with that. I think it would make sense for him to play uh, EME. I also think it's not a significant enough number of points uh, to risk doing one of these heavy all vowel draws again. Oh, but it looks like he is going for team. You know what? It's not 
in my mind, not terribly uh, significant a difference. I think they're both totally acceptable plays. Let's see what happens. We do know that Will has a lot of consonants on his rack. Um, so we'll see what what Jackson ends up pulling and if that uh, gamble ended up paying off for him. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Jackson opting for five more points now. Again, we've seen Jackson fairly consistently do this across the course of the tournament when he's been on stream. So we'll see if that AEL leave backfires. Nope, looks like he's going to dodge some of the vowels, but he will pick up two vowels, two consonants. And pull into air like, which I believe is good. Let me double check that. Those like words always get me because I'm like, you can, you can be like anything. I'll put any word in front of like and convince myself it's valid. Uh, they're, they're so tough, but uh, air like is good. Jackson, I'm certain, knows that. And he's got three different lines to play it in. So Jackson to bingo next turn, almost certainly, uh, unless he whiffs it or something. And Will's got to figure out how to deal with these tiles. I think this Lent play is very straightforward. G-I-N-R, a good solid leave, especially again on a board with bingo lines open. Uh, another fun option is Fangirl from the FA. I think Will probably has a few Fangirls in chat right now, so let him know if, you, uh, <laughs> if you're a fan of Will. But uh, Lent, I think, makes a ton of sense here. Nice play, and we'll see Jackson come down with air like now. Um, he's got to decide which line to play it in, but I think this one here is the only one that makes sense. 71 points here without opening a triple-triple, as opposed to 67 on the other side and opening a triple-triple. Definitely got to be the best play for Jackson here, and he drops it very quickly. 71 points will put Jackson ahead, 137 to 63, as Will with a ugh, G-I-N-R. You expect some decent stuff, right? No, he picks yeah, up that a Y. Kind of went as poorly as it could. He's going to have to likely spend one more turn just getting rid of that gunk. Um, I guess he could keep, he could just play off OI somewhere. It's kind of unfortunate. He's not going to be able to really bounce back from that bingo right away. Um, yeah, yeah. He's, he's got a few options. How much do I want to play now? Rooking through the K scores 30, but takes this rack that has some good synergy on them and uh, blows it all to smithereens, holds just an I. But 30 points now, not a bit, not a bad deal. And he you know, also- when we say blowing to smithereens, we also have a bag that we happen to know has both blanks still in it and he'd be throwing out six tiles. So that's a, okay. It looks like he's going to keep the ING. Yeah. Yeah. Iroko, another good option here. It's 10 fewer points, 20 as opposed to 30, but keeps ING together. Now, one thing about ING is you want to make sure it plays. ING bingos are sneaky in that, a lot of the time they don't fit on your board. A lot of bingos fit because they end in an S or have an S in them. But ING, I think, is going to work rather nicely here with that floating L, double doubles, uh, with the I that he set up in Iroko can play ING through that. And yet Will decides instead to draw three I's because he is stupid. Just kidding. (laughs) Why would he do that? Yeah. Come on, Will. Well, lucky for him, Jackson is kind of dealing with his own problem here. He has this really... Uh, vowel heavy board or vowel heavy what am I saying vowels and boards he has a very consonant heavy rack and uh, and not just that but kind of tricky consonants to play you know those two V's yeah it would be great if he could play Vav I don't know where he's thinking of doing that um, he's going to have trouble it, it, you know he could do something like valve I think that might be what he's considering right now through the L in air uh, like I think he's looking through the R he's looking at Varv a uh, similar play, two more points, and far more defensive. Ah, gotcha. Bro- blocking that lane. Yeah, I think the two big choices would be Varv through the V, block that lane, block the double double up a little bit, or Vape scores 10 more points, V A P E, making P I and E R. 34 points, but it opens the board with Jackson's lead and holds F Q V as opposed to the FQP leave that Varv would hold. I think Varv is a better play for Jackson with this game score. I have to say, too, that it's not like either of those leaves is terrific. I think either way, he's he's probably going to have some trouble next turn. We certainly aren't going to see a risk of him bingoing the next turn. So I think if you're in this position where you know it's kind of going to be yucky going for a while, maybe he's thinking might as well get those points. Yeah, so Jackson is opting for the points here. You know, obviously stringing the V out is uh, slightly risky, but if you get triple-tripled on through a V in the fifth spot, maybe it's not your day anyway. And you're right, 10 points out of a rack where 
unless you get a great draw, you're probably going to exchange next turn anyway. It makes some sense for Jackson to do this as well. So 34 points pushes Jackson ahead 171 to 83 as play passes back to Will, who, again, stupidly drew all of these I's and a Y when he could have drawn almost anything else and had a better rack. I just don't understand that strategy, Will. What is wrong with you? Really terrible, terrible picking, and I would say a, a real rookie move there. Um, now the question now is, you know, is he going to try once again with his ING, or is he willing to break it up for something like Viney and go for those points? Of course, if he does that, the leave AGII, absolute yuck in its own right. So it's a tough decision. I can see the merit either way, and probably more pessimistically, I can see the downside either way. Yeah, I uh, I don't know what Will's going to do here. Viney is 30. If he wants to play off the V or the, the G instead, he could consider Viga or its anagram Vagi uh, down from the V as well. If he wants to get this board open, he can try playing Ilya through the eye and air like. That's going to create a line that's going to be very difficult for Jackson to adequately close and will keep this board open longer term. But it only scores eight and holds G I N Y. Uh, one other option is just through the C in Centau to play Icy, Icy Y. Now Icy has no front hooks, so you're not opening the top quadrant of the board, but you are opening up the first column uh, for additional plays. Now you can play words starting with a vowel, with a B, uh, or potentially, you know, the, the V is still there as well. Something so that's options. nice about Icy too is that, you know, if you're not going to shut down this triple lane that's been open, at least make it so if you if Jackson takes one, Will's thinking I'll take the other. But it looks like he is considering playing off the G rather than the Y, um, playing either V A G I or V I G A. I don't know. I just I loathe Ys, especially when they're paired with Eyes, and there's no way he's getting rid of all the Eyes and the Y. So my inclination would be Viney, just because. Oh, I hate that IY combo. It's like WU. It's just the worst. Yeah, I think Viney has to be the move here. Just scores much better. And in any case, you're hoping to draw letters that will bail out your rack, whether that's like an L or an F to help you out of IINY or an N, some constants to help you out of AGII. I think you just grab the points here and Will agrees. So that's what we're going to see him come down. Viney, 30 points, and see if he can get out of this rack or if he continues to be a moron and draw vowels like AUU. You can see the frustration as he sets them down. Geez, Will, come on. I thought you were better than this. I thought you knew how to draw racks that were balanced. Ugh. And Jackson quickly playing the no-brainer play QIS. So he avoids the exchange for at least one more turn. I don't think Will is going to be so lucky. A-A-G-I-I-U-U. I think he just dumps seven here. Screw it. Maybe you dump six. Unseen to Will, 45 unseen tiles. And uh, only 13 of those are vowels. So maybe you consider holding an A, there's only two in the bag, and I, there's only two in the bag, or both. Could also maybe play QUAI, but I think that's crazy and overly aggressive and not so risky to do right now. So I think we're going to see an exchange either six or seven here. Um, I would be more partial to an exchange six just because vowels are at a premium right now. But exchanging seven gives you one more shot at one yep. of the two unseen blanks. Looks like he's making exactly that choice, which is for sure the right move. Um, for Jackson, you know, he's been very fortunate that with all of these yucky racks, he's been able to keep scoring. He's going to have a bit of a trickier time now. I think of all of the racks we've seen of his, all of these constant heavy racks, this is the most opportune time for him to potentially trade. What did Will do? He exchanged uh, six out of a rack of six vowels and drew six consonants. Uh, I, said, <laughs> I said vowels were at a premium. I didn't mean like this, Will. Come on, show us how to draw a rack that bingos. I know you're able to do that. I've seen you do it before, Will. Uh, man, maybe maybe holding AI was the move? I don't think so. That seems crazy. But I oh. think he just, whatever he did to piss off the tile gods today, I mean, the good news for, for him is that if, you know, it might have been a bit of a free trade if Jackson ends up trading. It's kind of like, well, let's just both start afresh here. Um, I'm curious what Jackson's other options are. Maybe something through the L. Maybe I, I'm, I'm struggling to find anything that I would deem worth it. 
so just from a strict equity perspective, Jackson's best play easily is Fervor, F-E-R-V-O-R, through the E and Air like with two overlaps. But that throws this board wide, wide open. And the board is reasonably closed right now. That's the last thing you want to do if you're Jackson. And yet, you could just score a bunch of points and beat Will that way too. Turning over five is also a good idea. Will's just exchanged six, so he either held one blank or no blanks. One or two possibly still in the bag. But I think Jackson's more conservative play of Forb makes a lot of sense here. Don't open the board as much. Yeah, maybe Will can bingo from the B, but it's nowhere near as aggressive as Fervor, and it helps us unclutter this rack a little bit. So that makes a and bunch of sense. Course, Jackson will pick one of those blanks, which is, who bad news for Will. Will is, you know, a bingo and then some behind at this point. Um I think he probably just has to use that B and open up the board. I think, you know, when you're behind that much, you can't play as conservatively and you maybe have to open things up. Um, something like, I don't know, bland or something that could take an S potentially would be helpful. It's hard because you know that there are these two blanks out there and it's just getting increasingly likely that your opponent's going to have them. Um but again, when you're in that position where you're down by so much, I don't really see that you have much of a choice other than opening up the board and trying to get some points so that deficit doesn't become insurmountable. Yeah, if I were Will, I would invent a time machine, go back in time and look in the bag as I draw to make sure I don't draw like seven <laughs> garbage racks in a row. I think that's probably his highest simming move. Uh, but alas, that is uh, against the rules. You cannot time travel in a Scrabble game. Uh, check the rule book. I'm certain it's there. So Will instead going to have to play something like bank, B-A-N-C, or he could play the same word with one of those S's at the end. Three more points, clearly telegraphs to Jackson. Yeah, I've got another S right now. Come get me. Um, but holding D-L-S-S, -S, I, I don't know how well that's going to work out for you. So I think banks is something you have to do. You set that S up so you can bingo to it. It's hard for Jackson to fully obstruct that lane as well. He'll just have to play it like a three or a four down to that S. And uh, yeah, I think this is the right thing. Open up the board, see if you can finally draw a good rack. And I bet Will's going to pick up either two of the U's that he just exchanged or four cards <laughs> here, if I had to guess. E-G-N-O-R-V blank for Jackson. And Will's play of banks is actually going to give him a bingo. Uh, Drovings plays down to the S. Um, but drovings is one of those, oh God, is that one of those words you can gerundize or, or yeah, not? Yeah, that, I don't think it's an intuitive word in the slightest. Drovings, of course, being the work of a drover. Of course. Yeah, for sure. Um, so drovings is valid. Jackson has set it up. He's staring at it and uh, we're going to have to see if he pulls the trigger on it here or not. Jackson, again, quite solid on his words, but will also excellent on the words and this is one of those racks too that are difficult to deal with because uh if you're studying if you're on ziziva or aerolit the word study programs and you see this rack d-g-i-n-o-r-s-v of course it's going to be drovings like there's nothing else that even makes sense you're right. going to type it and not think about it so it's really tricky to have mastery of these words and jackson demonstrating that he does not as he likes to play the more conservative vogs and that's a play that wins the game a lot for him, but definitely going to cost him some spread that he could have had in the but, future. But, you know, it, it, it is more important just to win the game. And at this point, I, I do understand, you know, he's essentially shut down this board pretty effectively. I guess there's a, an eight starting with a D uh, from Boated. I'm trying to think what else, what other lanes really exist. Yeah, I mean, Will's got to create another one here. He's got ways to do that. Ho dead or a hold for the O in Vogue. A hold takes a sneaky back S, and ho dead, mm -hmm. of course, taking a back S as well. So ho dead, I think, sets up this huge, huge bingo line for you uh, that is going to be important. But ho dead, a lot easier to block with a little overlap or underlap for Jackson. So a hold, I think, makes a lane that stays there longer. Ho dad, I just feel like Jackson's going to stack on top or underneath if he has even one vowel and make this line go away. But uh, ho dad, what Will electing to play here. And when you've drawn this badly all game, uh, I mean, there's not too much you can do. You just kind of cross your fingers and pray. 
Uh, that prayer is going to be unanswered, though, as Jackson's sitting on a great rack, D-G-N-O-R-S blank. And in the line Will's created, Jackson has numerous bingos. He's got three of them. Grounds is the highest mm -hmm. scoring for 91. There's also Drongos and Dragons. So when it rains, it pours for Will. And a Jackson to bingo here, likely for 91 with Grounds and Surge far, far ahead in this game. I think it's very uh, unlikely that Jackson misses this. And I'm sure he knows that Hodad takes the S. I guess that's one merit of a hold is that you're at least not putting it in the triple lane. Um, so he's about to have an incredibly high scoring bingo. Even if Will comes back with a bingo from this, there's no coming back from what's going to end up being a 140, 150 point deficit um, this late in the game. I don't know if we have exactly how many tiles are left in the bag, but it's, it's getting to the point where just from a board openness standpoint, we're not going to get more than two more bingos on this board, I would say, or at least it's very unlikely. Um, so it looks like Jackson, the only thing he's considering right now is does Hodad take an S? Um, I think he, yeah, exactly. He knows that um, that's good. And even if he didn't, he knows it's worth it to give it a try as it's likely good. Um, yeah, yeah. But I'm sure he knows that word. Yeah, Jackson certainly knows that word. And uh, he, despite his bingo miss last turn of drovings, he's going to bingo with uh, exactly the same tiles, GG and ORS and a blank Q. 91 points puts Jackson ahead 329 to 160. And Will finally looking like he might bingo, but alas, nothing's going to play out of this rack. It looks so good and high prob, but nope. So Will has really that cute same problem that you were talking about earlier where you've got these, I think you said stuck in the sticks or something like that. You've got these like really nice looking tiles, but if they can't bingo, it's like, well, now what do I do with these? And Jackson drawing the other blank. Oh Jackson's man. Draw every blank on stream all tournament. Uh, that's kind of been the way it's been so far. And for that, we'll try to stream other players to see if somebody can beat Jackson and draw a blank against him. Maybe, maybe shake up the pairings at board one. Just kidding, but only kind of. Uh, Will has a really cute play <laughs> here, um, extending grounds with two letters to make groundzel, G-R-O-U-N-D-S-E-L. Um, that's a nice play, holds A-E-I-S-T as well, scores 30. That's pretty dope. He's also got two good ways to score despite these sticks. Ave, A-V-E, through the V, scores 23, sets up a nines line to play to the E-D, and evited, he plays it before I can even get there, scores 36. <laughs> so Will, I'm certain Will knows this word, groundsel. He knows so many words. But uh, yeah, he's just scoring points here. He's got to score a lot of points and get lucky and draw that blank and find a miracle bingo that fits on a dead board. He knows he's sunk and he's just playing for spread at this point, which, yeah, you can't blame the guy. He's drawn like garbage against one of the best players on the continent. And uh, he's basically dead in the water at this point. I would think if I were ever unfortunate enough to have to play Jackson, I would at least hope for a completely unbalanced uh, distribution of power tiles in my favor. And that is not what happened here. That is a good strategy, Hannah. And I think more Thank people can try to think of that strategy as they play Jackson. Now, I'll tell you my strategy. I've had Jackson's number over the last several games that we've played. The key is you need to lose at least one or two turns in the game on botched challenges. Uh, I, I seem to lose like two or three turns a game, either playing phonies or challenging Jackson's valid words, and then I keep beating him. So that's something I think we might need to see other players try. We need to see them lose turns to Jackson on phonies, and then maybe you'll draw so well that you get lucky and beat him. That's, uh, that's how I've been doing it. So take, take some advice from me. I'm extra sarcastic this <laughs> my morning. My advice Don't actually. I didn't have time for my coffee yet. God, I need a break. Ugh. <laughs> oh my gosh, Will Anderson finally getting power tiles, but with absolute yuck and way too late in the game. Oh my goodness, Will. Yeah, you can see the disgust. U W X Z. Like, okay, whatever. Uh, just just go over there, guys. I don't care anymore. Uh, please get yeah. me off stream. Let me go punch the wall. And then uh, I'll be back in 10 minutes. If I'm Will, I would go straight to a casino after play today. Because if you've been this unlucky, you're bound to get lucky at the table, right? Gambler's Fallacy 101. I'm sure that's how statistics works. You know what's my, my key here is just be rated low enough that you never have to play either of them. 
That's Ooh, highly recommend. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Really, really works for me. I have to tell you. So Jackson now has to consider what to do. Is he willing to, you know, kind of fish, play some things off just for the sake of, oh, it looks like he had been holding Evited. Yeah, even if, I mean, we know that's valid, but even if it's not, it's not worth Jackson to challenge that. Yeah, yeah. I say everything about Will tongue-in-cheek. There's no way he punches a wall. He has emotion like everybody else, but he's one of the nicest dudes out there on the scene. Will will not be punching a wall or a yes. banner or another Scrabble player anytime soon. And if he does, I will eat my left shoe. I think and Jackson... you know something I think, oh, I was just going to say, something that's important to remember is that you know, it, it, the worst to me is when you're having a good game, but you can't actually enjoy it because you have to be babysitting your opponent the whole time. Mm. And so it's just if your opponent's having a good game, let them have that good game. You know, don't don't force them to be taking care of you. We all have had good tiles. We all have had bad tiles. Looks like he's just going to play off P-U, which maybe describes that combination of letters. Uh, I really hate having W's and U's together, as I'm sure this dream now knows. Jackson potentially could bingo here uh, if he draws. I mean, he drew well. So we'll see what happens. Now the question for Will is, which of these power tiles is he going to dump, and how is he going to get enough points for it? If he does something like Zaw off of ground, he's essentially shutting down the only bingo lane that's really left, unless Jackson miraculously opens up something else for him. Um, but I think at this point, he's got to see, you know, he's reading the writing on the wall. He's like, I'm not going to be <laughs> probably not going to be bingoing. I think I just need to go for points at this point in the game. Um, he could also do, I mean, there are a few different triple letters he could take advantage of. Am I missing some like big play? Uh, no, no, there's nothing exciting that Will can do out of this rack except potentially playing warm, just W-A-R-M down to the arm at the top of the board that would set up his S though unseen to will is an S or uh, sorry, is a blank, no S's, right. uh, but that, that could be cute. You know, you can come back with a big Z or X play um, in that line that you've created for yourself. Of course, Jackson has the blank and will probably burn it to play something like waste and block that spot. But Hey, that's a cute option. Otherwise just cash in your power tile. I think Z a alongside team Making TA scores 33 points, whatever. You can just do that. It also sets up your X next turn. So, you know, yep. that's something Will can do. But at this point, down 150 with garbage on your rack and very few tiles left in the bag, I think you just kind of do something, lose the game, and then try to win your next game. Damage control is the mode Will is in right now. Absolutely. Damage control, both for your spread and for your ego, I think. Yeah, so here comes Za uh, that's going to hold on to XU and tax next turn. Uh, Jackson's going to block it because, of course, he's got that last A unseen to Will and will be able to make a ZA play underneath. Just kind of the way this game has gone for Will and the way exactly. they're going to continue to go for Will as Jackson likely to play a no-brainer play like Ma for 33 points holding ENT blank. Yep. Something that's a little nice for Will, at least, is that I don't really see any major missteps in this game. Uh, you know, we can talk about he could have made this decision or that decision. He could have done something like Ooh. rooking, but um, but I don't think he made any major mistakes in this game. He just his only mistake was drawing so poorly. Hang on, now look at this. So uh, this is another merit to ZA that just struck me right after he played it. When Jackson plays Ma, he gets to drop Ox underneath now with yeah, and that's Zach. nice. Okay, a nice good job, Will. You got some points. Now, in a game where it looked like there was no way you're going to hit 300, you wielded the Z and the X, the only goodies you've had all game, uh, holding the nice UWU, UWU synergy on your rack for those at home. And uh, look at that, <laughs> very close to 300 all of a sudden. If Will can pick up the blank in a miracle bingo from his perspective, hang on, maybe there's some life. But of course, Jackson going to draw every blank on stream all tournament. I'm tournament. also not, are there any bingos that have U U W. How many bingos are there with U U W? I'm curious. I don't know. What's this? There are um, four. Oh, no, there are five. Unwound, upswung, unrung, mugwump, and unwound. Oh, wow, that should be like a theater vocal warm up saying those five words. Unwound being the the past of unwind. 
Oh, <laughs> to unwound someone when you, you know, hurt them, but then you bring them a Band-Aid. I think we call that healing or medicine, depending mm. on if you're playing a video game or in real life. <laughs> I feel like he's setting up Uwu just for the sake of the... <laughs> he knows the stream well. All right, whatever, Jackson. Play Jug. Yeah, do anything at this point. Uh, put Will out of his misery. Um, yeah, I guess you can try to open the board and get another bingo, or you can play Jug and hold rent and just kind of see what happens. I don't know. Whatever. Nothing matters anymore. This game is is over, over, over. <laughs> and Hannah and I just have to try to kill airtime until one of these players runs out of tiles. Are we at the final? Yeah, we're we've got how many tiles in the bag at this point? Two in the bag. Uh, two. Yeah. And they're such beautiful bingo-friendly tiles, <laughs> just not for Will. Come on, I still want to see Warm come down, except, uh, you know, that unseen blank now more than likely to be on Jackson's rack from Will's perspective. So, alas. It's oh, true. Is he looking at it? Is that why he's pushed the W aside? That would be a nice, I mean, I, I get the theory behind it. It would put him over that 300 mark, which is nice. How, how did Jackson draw a bingo? He's going to bingo with intrigue through the U and jug. Jeez. This is disgusting. This is disgusting. This isn't even fair anymore. Jackson on another level with both timing, word finding, word knowledge, blank drawing, all of the above. This is what it takes to get Gibsonized with three games to go at Word Cup and then to be two games ahead of the field in Vegas. You have to be great at Scrabble, yes, but you also have to get lucky as there are many very strong players in the field. I mean, I don't know that I would have like, it would have taken me a while to find intrigue. And I think I would have to be confident that there is a bingo available on this board. Um, but you're right. That is who, <laughs> and he's going to get points from Will's rack. I don't even know if Will has a play that he would consider that would block that maybe doing something through, with the queue, but I don't think he has, I don't even see what play he would possibly consider to shut down that lane. Yeah, no, I don't I don't think it's in the card. So Jackson's going to get intrigued down almost certainly next turn. The real question is, does Will empty the bag or not? And he is going to empty the bag, making Jackson's out bingo even more strong as he's going to catch Will with uh, several or seven full tiles on his rack and get extra points. So Jackson going to bingo out with intrigue for 66. Pick up G-I-L-O-S-U-W. Uh, eager to see Will's body language when this happens. I think if you're Will at that point, you just got to do a full shrug of like, well, that was that. Yeah, G-O, of course, into my I-U-W, because why not? Um, a really weird, awkward spelling of Woogles, perhaps? Um, <laughs> wow, Goggles. Yeah, uh, and uh, sometimes we cut to the post-game banter for y'all. I don't think there's going to be any post-game banter. Uh, Jackson, one of the players who will certainly say, yeah, I got lucky and I bagged you. There are some players who think every time they win, it's all because of skill. Jackson certainly recognizing he's drawn the bag as Will recognizes the same. And uh, the bingo does come down, catches Will with a bunch of garbage. G-I-L-O-S-U-W is very indicative of the way Will has drawn all game. And uh, we're going to end up with the final of 484 to 314. I mean, that was, I hope we get to see Will here again, because I would love for uh, our audience to get to see Will actually play. I feel like he didn't really have the opportunity here. Um, so I would love to see him, you know, get to, sometimes I feel like I, when I play opponents, I want to be like, I promise I know how to play this game. And I think we all know very well that Will is an excellent player. So I hope we see him up at this board again at some point. And uh, even if we don't, I hope he just <laughs> gets to play Scrabble in a way that he didn't really get to in this game. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm sure we'll see more Will Anderson this tournament. Uh, we don't intend to put Jackson up here every single game he plays if he sits two games atop, especially on day three. We'd like to showcase more of the players in the field. And then as we get closer to the end on day four, we'll show the highest intensity games uh, throughout the day. Uh, for right now, we are going to cut away for just a few minutes as we let the players stretch their legs, as we let Will put several holes in the wall with his fist. Just kidding. Um, and we will be back shortly. We got to get this commentator some coffee 
before he starts making self-deprecating jokes again. So uh, with that, <laughs> we're going to cut away. I'm Matt Kanick, joined by Hannah Lieberman. We will be back with round 16 of the Scrabble Players Championship in a few short moments. Y'all don't go anywhere. Keep the chat popping, okay? <laughs>